how are you? We are back with another video here. As you can see, we are hard at it. Finally had some time to jump back onto the 62 frame, which I'm super, super excited for because we've had multiple meetings over. We've made some few changes on it. The owner came by, saw it, came out of state front to see it. And uh, you know, this was being pretty much managed and being taken care of and being built by CNC Anaheim. So what I love about this is they're pretty much just giving us free reign on whatever we want to do. They gave us a budget to stay within that budget and from there build as crazy as we could build. So I'm super excited because not very many people let us do that. And my favorite part about that is when we have free free reign on this and we have we could use our creative freedom on this, things always come out so much better. And normally the customer gets more than they ask for actually at that point because we're like, it's flowing, the juices are going, and we're like, man, let's just, just keep going because we know the potential of that build or that car. And this is one of them. So I'm super, super stoked, super excited, especially because I know what's going on with this car. You guys have to wait to see it though. And if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name's Alex. Uh, we got Vic here, we got Mike here, we got Gary here, we got Natalie here, we got uh, Caesar here, we got Eric, which is at heart. He's in Colorado now, but still Hopwood family. And of course, we got the main man himself, Art. Uh, so the way things have been, guys, is it's been crazy. And if you guys are just jumping in on this channel, I do appreciate that. If you guys are longtime subscribers, again, I appreciate that as well. Thank you, guys. This channel started off as just a helpful channel to help out people. Then it kind of turned into more of a vlogging style and people wanted to see more and more and more. So we're just trying to give you guys more and more and more. A lot of people jump in this channel thinking they're gonna see strictly nothing but lowriders. But the thing is, without parts, there wouldn't be any lowriders. So for us, we have converted in the last few years and we have pretty much turned into full manufacturing now. And with that being said, we don't do as many in-house vehicles as we used to. We used to knock out a couple hundred a year, basic jobs, airbag jobs. Now, we're shipping out a few thousand kits a year um, just because we turned into more manufacturer shipping, everything is going e-commerce. So I can't bring you guys the cool content of like a whole bunch of cars here every single day. I mean, we do have this Mach-E here still, which, man, Neil, if you don't come pick us up in the next few days, I'm gonna sign over Pink Slip over to my name, and then I'm just gonna take ownership of it because uh, this thing's been here for a while now. Don't be taking advantage of my storage. I do gotta say, this year, being that we're just starting off this year, I can already project it. it's gonna be a crazy, crazy freaking year. On top of that, we have lined up a few shows already, um, and I'm excited to see those shows because we have obviously a few cars, which is this one. Then we have some new stuff already in works for SEMA 2022. Same thing for Super Show. And I'm excited to see all those because a lot of these are just different, they're creative. It's not your standard out of the box 62 or 64 that has the same thing as every other 62 or 64 out there. So that is the cool and the nice part. Our customers are allowing us to be different and to express ourselves. And of course, we are still cutting away like crazy on the plasma. This thing has just been an absolute workhorse. Plasma cam, I cannot thank you guys enough for always taking care of us when we need any type of tech support. Also, I just gotta say, this thing's paid for itself a hundred times in advance and it's just non-stop going it's one of my favorite favorite purchases we've made here i just can't wait till we upgrade so now we're gonna be moving our way over to 65 to 66 impala's uh wishbone 65 to 66 impala wishbones uh that's our next project that's next to, on the to-do list so we're gonna jump over there also i noticed on the last video you guys are commenting say 50 degrees ain't cold and 28 degrees ain't cold i'll tell you what guys when I chose to live in California, I chose California for a specific reason. Good weather. It's always 70s, 80s. I could deal with that. Now for the people who live in Alaska and the people who live in states that get into the negatives, you guys chose to live there. So I'm complaining because it's supposed to be 70 here and it's, it's 28, it's way too cold. So yes, I am a little sissy when it comes to the cold, I'll take it. I like heat. I'd rather have hot than cold. So yeah, 28 is freezing for us guys. If you haven't noticed by the beanie, the jacket, and the other Carhartt jacket, I'm freezing. Also it tends to be colder inside the actual warehouse than outside because the building just holds in the temperature. So even this guy's freezing. Today's actually not so bad. I ain't gonna lie, today's not that bad. Even though I do look like it's a blizzard outside, it's not bad. 
Here we go. So this is officially Vic's first time doing a 65 to 66 wishbone. So we're actually showing him and teaching him right now. That way he can make life easier for all of us. Um, he's jigging it all together right now. Showing him line up. And then from there, hopefully it'll be a lot quicker on production because right now we're having to obviously cut and design over there, which they're already designed. So it's just cut and then it hits this table as far as cleanup. Then it gets carted over, hits the time saver and gets uh, time saved. Then it comes back over to this table, gets cleaned. From there, it comes over here and we start jigging it up. Uh, we have jigs all over the place for these things. So right now he's just doing the free floating section. And again, this is his first time actually doing this, so hopefully you don't mess this up. Oh, you're nervous, huh? You're nervous, huh? I don't think. What you wait for him to say? Some people need to work here. These 65 to 66 wishbones are completely different than the standard 58 to 64 wishbone. And I'll show you the difference real quick. This is our 59 to 64 wishbone. I just welded this one up this morning. You guys can see it. So I will show you the difference real quick. And one thing, so this is the main profile of the wishbone. That's how much different the 65 or the 59 to 64 versus the 65 to 66 wishbones are. They are way bigger, they're way wider. Um, and it's not, you know, one stronger than the other. The reason is is the way the suspension is designed on the 65 to 66 it's just more of a wider shorter um length so in order for us when we designed this it had to fit in those obviously those dimensions because it has to bolt into the stock location and there's honestly i don't think anyone else makes a wishbone for 65 to 66 a lot of guys will make like a triangulated but the thing with the triangulated is it's still the brackets still go to stock length and what happens is that really limits you as far as lockup um, and movement and travel and three wheel as well. This one right here, it actually goes and extends beyond the original mounting positions of where, let's say the axle's here and the, the, the rear end tabs go right above it where the upper arm connects to. This actually extends beyond it. So it actually makes the upper wishbone or arm length longer. So it actually, it's better for pinion angle. One of the key things on this is, there is so many pieces involved into building this. Tell me about it. This is Vic's first time. He's always wondered, he goes, man, what takes you so long? What takes you so long? What are these wishbones from start, from cut time, cleanup time, tack time, jig time, and weld time? It takes us right about four and a half hours to build one. And that's obviously, you can see the clean, the finish is real, real clean on these. Um, but this whole cart is pretty much it, minus this piece. There we go, let's get that out of here. This full cart is dedicated to a wishbone. So... A lot of people are like, man, what takes you guys so long to build those? You know, why is it so expensive? Why does it take you so long, as he used to say? There's a lot of pieces involved in this. Seriously, a lot. And Vic's learning that right now as he's kind of tacking everything together. He thought he was done when he attacked like three pieces. I'm like, you're barely on like stage one of eight right now. How do you feel? You officially graduated step one of eight. What? For my shit to do, man. <laughs> So he's officially got step one done, which is gonna be the main axle housing, which mounts behind the pumpkin. Obviously this is fully removable and has rubber bushings in it. We make it removable, that way you can still service the diff um, and still obviously chrome the rear end, paint this, you could take it all apart, detail it, do whatever you gotta do. So now the next step from here is unfortunately we have to fully weld this to move to the next step. Um, that way when we place these pieces in right here that it actually gets welded inside of it instead of uh, skipping that part so I like to actually weld everything prior then actually get this in place a quick pit stop go pick up my Red Bull all right now I can weld so Vic just put on some of my favorite music Vic what do you think about my favorite genre huh? what do you think about my favorite genre of music <laughs> it's a toy, but we're going the first time. Introduce Vic for the first time ever. He has never heard bluegrass. Now, some of you guys might laugh and think, yeah, like that's 
Okay, a lot of you guys are probably gonna laugh and think that that's a weird genre, but I absolutely love bluegrass. A lot of people don't know that. I like a whole variety of music. I even listen to mixed weird banda music that you listen to. You listen to that shit? Okay, I listen to that too. <laughs> I listen to it more than big. But my music genre is like all over the board. I like everything. I will not say no to any type of music. Um, I cannot name artists. I cannot name song names. I don't care about that. I just literally like how it makes me feel. And bluegrass makes me feel good. And I like listening to bluegrass when I'm walking sometimes. Sometimes I'll even type in some like Slipknot and I'll put in Slipknot and I'll start welding. Sometimes I'll even put in some country, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I'll go some funk. I don't know, it just depends on what my mood is in. I cannot complain about the bluegrass and how it made me feel on these welds. Cause you guys can see there. We got one section done. And this right here is just shy of uh, six feet of actually weld uh, on both sides. So we got all the verticals done over here. We got around the bushing and then we got all the top section done. Now we gotta flip this guy over and do the other side. Dick's first attempt at the brake didn't go so well. Gotta start over. Now he's learning, so I'm expecting mess ups. It happens. So it happens to the best of us, so that's the only way you're gonna learn. Mess up, try again, do it again. So he's doing it again right now, and we'll see how these ones come out. Officially finished his uh, first 65 to 66 wishbone, and uh, let's just say I don't think he's ever gonna bug me again about how long these are taking. Uh, I was really, it was really fun and an enjoyable moment uh, to just watch him get frustrated. <laughs> the shipping department always gives me crap, like, "Hey, uh, where's this order? Where's this? I need to get this out." And I'm like, uh, "Hold on, you know, I got 15 Y bones ahead of you and uh, two 65 wishbones." And I don't think they understood how long they actually take to build. So having Vicky back here, teaching them how to actually tack these and prep them for me, uh, it was fun. It was really, really fun. Like I said, I don't think they're ever going to bug me about uh, shipping times again. Got the main axle section all done. Don't mind the clutter and mess behind it. Um, we're also working on 59 to 64 wishbones and a whole bunch of whammy tanks. So this one is done. All the main axle brackets are done. The main frame brackets are done. So now we're just working our way over. I just welded up all the bushings real quick. That way those don't obviously uh, move around on us. They're all tacked in, but now they're fully welded on both sides. So now we're gonna actually drop all these welds here. These ones right here are about 16 inch pass, single pass, single pass, 16 inch. Uh, you're gonna have that times four, obviously. And then these main front ones right here, these ones right here are about 22 inches, uh, give or take. And uh, we got four of those as well. So let's get welding, guys. Hit the time lapse. Think 65 to 66 wishbone. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Come on. Too much hard. Too much work. Too much hard. <laughs> <laughs> Too hard. So guys, we just did some much needed maintenance on our Kaiser compressor. Uh, we just did air filter change and uh, the main outer filter. Uh, that thing has been needing a major, major uh, change in big time, um, for a long time I should say. Uh, you should see the amount of dust that came out of it. Uh, actually, let me show you guys real quick. That is our floor and that is the filter. 
This thing literally weighed like two pounds. It has like two pounds of dust in there. So much metal grinding and just dust and just grinding in general and the plasma creates so much dust in here. That thing is just bound to suck up so much freaking dirt. So I'm glad we did that, uh, that little maintenance on it. It was much needed. Um, Vic also had a great time on the 65 to 66 wish phone. I actually walked back there a little while ago and he was starting another one for me. So that's actually great news. Uh, I guess he felt conf uh, confident enough to keep going, which the first one came out good. He, f he had a few little mess ups, which learning, obviously you're going to have that, you know? So we guided him in the right direction, showed him how to do it. And, uh, he nailed it. He did good on it. So now I got a lot of paperwork to do. Um, yeah, the guys are gone. It's late. It's about 7:30 here. Uh, it's been a long day started at six for us as far as production and shipping and we, it's like 7 30 now so that shows you how long of a day it is so time to go home thank you guys for always liking sharing subscribing you guys have a good one i'm out